There's a bird in the tree right there. Got it. Wait, birds aren't real. It's a robot. What? What? I oh, know, I know too much. Hey, you, you're finally awake. We've all seen drones with spinning propellers, but what about a drone that flaps its wings like a bird or an insect? Today I'm going to be showing you my bionic bird and talking about the differences between how birds fly and airplanes fly. Okay, so let's see how this thing flies. So to steer it, I can just turn the tail like this, and then it flaps its wings. <laughs> let's see if it can actually fly. Okay, so it says just give it a toss. Here we go. Whoa. It works. So this actually works. It's so weird to see something flapping like a bird that's actually a drone that I'm controlling. I never would have thought that I would describe a machine as majestic. It gives the feeling that you're watching a real bird fly. So how is this different than a plane? Well, the first main difference is that for a plane, the thrust and lift components are separate and decoupled entities. But for a bird, the wings provide the thrust and the lift as part of a single mechanism that can be actively controlled and manipulated by active shape change. What's really cool is if I use a scale and capture the air being pushed down by the bionic bird, you can see the thrust and lift components depending on the angle of the bird. So the bird by itself weighs around 10.3 grams. Now let's say it's just flapping straight like this. Let's see the force of air being pushed downward. You can see that it's only around two grams, 1.7 grams here. So only 1.7 gram force is being pushed downward. The rest is being used as thrust pushing that way. So you can see if I turn it upward like this, Then we get over the weight of the bird. So it has almost 11 gram force of thrust to push it forward. It's pushing air backward to get it moving forward fast enough so the, the air will hit the wing and be pushed downward with enough force to lift the whole weight of the bird. So when it does get moving to speed, the wings will now be pushing at least 10.3 gram force of air down to make the bird fly. When a bird is just soaring without flapping, it's more similar to an airplane flight. The angle of attack forces air downward. This in turn pushes the bird upward. But in order to keep speed or hover, the bird has to provide some thrust by flapping. If a flying object isn't changing elevation, then it always needs to be throwing air downward to stay up. For example, if a drone is just hovering in place over a scale, the scale will register the weight of the drone on it as long as it captures all the downward moving air. But for a bird, it isn't as continuous of a process. For example, researchers have found that during the downstroke of birds flapping its wings, a bird supports twice its body weight. But during the upstroke, it's in free fall. So the average is a downward thrust of one body weight, but it does it in lumps of flapping wings. This means that for a normal bird to try to hover in place, it's really hard. They move up and down. But if you've ever seen a hummingbird, you'll notice that they can hover almost perfectly in place. But how is that the case? Well, hummingbirds fly differently than all other birds. If you look at the thrust of the hummingbird, you'll see that they support their body weight on the downstroke and on the backstroke. So they can hover perfectly in place. Another thing that's quite different from a plane and a bird is that it was recently discovered that a bird's tail also produces lift along with its wings. In this video from the University of London's Royal Veterinary College, you can see the wingtip vortices form on an owl flying through some neutrally buoyant helium bubbles. These tip vortices happen because high pressure air from the bottom of the wing escapes around the wingtip, moving up towards the lower pressure area on the top of the wing. 
This air pressure difference is high when lift is high. So when you see these tip vortices, you can see the effect of lift. But you'll notice that there are tip vortices at the tail as well. This indicates that the tail is providing lift as well. This was a surprise because on most airplanes, the tail plane is for providing stability and control, not necessarily for providing lift. Birds are extremely efficient, which is why from the very start of aeronautical engineering, humans tried to mimic birds, but we were never able to fly until we stopped trying to mimic birds. This is because we have to use engines and man-made materials to make the plane so we could never mimic the joints and precision necessary for flapping wings. So in the end, we separated the thrust and lift components of flight. This turned out to be a good thing because even though birds get more efficient at larger sizes, that efficiency eventually breaks down when you get to very high speeds and large sizes, like the size of modern planes. So we've become better than birds at speed and size, but birds are still unmatched in their ability to change directions with exact precision and control. So we still have a lot to learn from bird flight for drones that are in the size and speed range of birds. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab and we'll see you next time.